So I grew up in a wealthy, almost entirely white neighborhood. I mean, I went to boarding school for fuck's sake. I'm gonna share with you some of the weird messages about wealth and status that I internalized as a child and I've only recently started to unpack. Disclaimers are stupid, but just in case anybody gets bothered by this, I actually believe these things, so don't forget them. A list of things that are inexplicably good, L.L. Bean, the tote especially, and Range Rovers. Interesting. Okay, so I grew up wealthy. Here are the unspoken rules of rich white people, according to this TikTok person thing. She's a wealth of information. A Brooklyn-based SEO manager, which I'm surprised SEO is even really that big of a thing anymore, is revealing the unspoken rules of wealthy people sharing the status secrets of the rich white neighborhood in her hometown of Denver. If you spend a lot of time around weird rich white people, you will start to adopt some of the things that they think and say and do, whether or not you realize it. Madison Van Doren explains in her viral TikTok, which boasts 768,000 views. Well, you know, it's kind of funny because I recently did... A video where I covered how people on TikTok who are like eating food, right? Eating food in their car, like fast food, are getting like multiple millions of views. But her complaining about rich white people don't even get that. <laughs> so first up on her music list, LL Bean, specifically the brand's iconic tote bag, which I don't even know what a tote bag is. Range Rovers with the newest models starting at $106,000. Also, symbolize success, Van Dorn continued. Which, by the way, like Range Rovers, I gotta say, are probably one of the dumbest vehicles that have ever been made. They break down all the time. You always see, like, soccer moms driving them for some reason. Like, yeah, they could kind of go fast if you get the sporter thing, like the sporter version of it sportier version of it but imagine spending like a hundred and something grand for a brand new car and then like within a year it might be worth like 60 like it is disgusting the depreciation on Range Rovers and the main reason is because Range Rovers Range Rovers specifically for some reason break down all the time so she recalled her mom once pointing out a doctor who drove one, saying, yeah, she drives a Range Rover. That's how you know she made it. Like, that is such, like, an absurd thing to say, too. But Van Dorn now realizes if you live in New York City, you're never going to have a Range Rover unless you're an idiot or just like to spend money, bouldering, rock climbing without ropes and harnesses, and buying status symbol items, such as bags and cars and then not using them, are also signs of opulent wealth, she added. See, that's the thing that I never really understood, is like, say you get a lot of money, what is the purpose of buying more items, like spending more item on things that you literally will never touch? It's like buying, like, 20 pairs of shoes, but really you're only going to be wearing one. So while designer items with flashy logos seem indicate luxury, Van Dorn debunked that theory. In fact, she insists her wealthy neighbors wouldn't dare buy a Louis Vuitton bag or anything dripping in logos. Thou shalt not purchase Louis Vuitton, she declared, especially anything with a logo on it unless you want people to think you're poor. Posting photos of ski trips or vacations is also on Rurally, she noted. Rurally, social media participation is frowned upon, she said, adding that the elite also snub red bottom Louis Vuittons. Like, the thing is, maybe she's more so talking about generational white money, maybe? Like, the elite elites? Right? But who knows? Van Dorn urged anyone who hasn't spent extensive time around weird, rich, white people to practice some self-reflection about the assumptions they might hold about the world. 
Viewers debated old versus new money. See, like, yeah, I'm thinking she's talking more so about like old money because new money probably would be pretty okay with just flaunting wealth. So while others realize they too grew up like Van Dorn. As an adult, I realize wealthy people don't wear labels at all when person confessed. A notion that Van Dorn called the Steve Jobs aesthetic. Well, personally, I've seen wealthy people either wear no logos, or if they do wear a logo, it's like a very small logo that you don't really notice. Let's see, my grandparents were owed money, and my grandmother refused to get her nails done because she thought it was pretentious. She did them herself, chimed in another. Now, also, it's another thing to think about, too, is also, like, cultural differences, right? Because, like, big money in the Hispanic community might be very different in how they express it. Big money in the black community might be very different. Big money in the Asian community could be very different, etc., right? So let's see. So many requests to make this a series and do part two, so I hope you enjoy this. First, I need some coffee. Okay, we are caffeinated and ready to go. When you guys ask for- Because, you know, that was just necessary. Part two, I was so nervous that I wouldn't have anything to say, and then I like literally could not sleep last night. My brain was just zooming. I was like, oh, I have so much, so many things, so many thoughts. Just a gentle reminder, this is not intended to be aspirational content. I'm not trying to tell you how to behave like old money. Instead, it's more of like a cultural anthropology. Okay, so she is talking about old money. Ology, exploring the funny and quirky behavior of people I grew up around. Welcome to part two of weird status symbols for rich white people. So many people have a middle name that they use as their first name. My family included. First name is actually like a family name, like a grandparent, great grandparent, whatever. And then they use their middle name as their first name. They'll be out in the world being like, hi, my name is Francis, but their first name is Gertrude. This one is very location seasonal dependent, but Tivas? and hunter boots. For skincare and makeup, it's really funny. It's like a flex to not need it, right? So heavy makeup, whatever, seems to be somewhat frowned upon. And then for skincare, oh my God, the drugstore lotions are just making a killing. All about like the Eucerin, Vaseline, movie theaters at your house. You know, converting that like whatever extra bedroom into a movie theater. I want to think that the brand of rich white people I've spent a lot of time around are not into. First, suburban McMansions. It's all about the luxury condo or the like remote chalet. Like have neighbors and a house at the same time. No, no. Okay. I mean, I, I gotta agree with that, right? If you got money, why on earth would you want to have neighbors? <laughs> I just about died during your scene in White Lotus because the news got into it. They don't, they don't care what's going on in the world, except for the economist. <laughs> the economist. At the end of the day, people are people and they're different everywhere, no matter who they are and where they come from. So if the people in your area behave really differently, I am so curious. Please tell me why. Interesting. Wealth whispers, trip one user. Pigs on vacation are gosh. One person quipped. Okay. I always laugh when they say rich people aren't showy, someone else joked. Then you see how they plastered their names on buildings because they donated money. <laughs> the mindset is you don't need to photo op the events you normally do. Brunching, wintering, summering, boat days, travel, all just normal. Another explained. Interesting. Let's see some of these comments. Oh god, there's a lot of comments. Okay. If you live in New York City, you're never going to have a Range Rover unless you're an idiot. Come to Soho, Range Rover defenders all over. <laughs> Old money has an arm full of ugly ink. Old money, grandkids eco smack addicts. <laughs> Jesus. She's right about Denver elite wealthy. I worked at Mercedes and BMW, Denver. The clients were very drab, and Range Rovers were the it ride. Benz and BMW secondary, or for kids, or secretary. No logos needed, and second homes in mountains, standard. Loved it, miss it. She presents as no rich person I ever knew. That's because she probably isn't rich. The French are the same way. They don't wear labels. They don't get their nails done by a manicurist. They don't even discuss money. Interesting. Let's see. So my grandparents were rather rich for some time, but also lived through the Depression. 
My grandmother would save the water from steaming veggies and use it to make soup base. If you did not scrape the eggs from the pan, she would stomp her feet and yell at you. <laughs> Nothing was wasted and no fancy labels for the sake of labels, but only if the clothes or things were of high quality and thus good value. I see, not even remotely true. The road according to a status hound. I happen to be comfortable. I shun what she describes. I know people who come from old money. Logos and Range Rovers are not true. Not even close. High-end stuff and products, but not to show wealth to be happy with their choice. Some cases, sure. Logo bling and flashy cars, but not the majority. Go to Chatham, MA, or... Rancho Mirage CA. In many of these DC low income areas in NE and SE, I see lots of local brand items, row and fake, and some Range Rovers, drug dealers, I assume. Yeah, see, like a lot of people who are poor, like truly poor, will go into debt to seem rich. And some people who are actually making good money will actually go into debt just to make themselves look even richer than they are. <laughs> hmm, let's see. LOL, all you needed to see was the tattoo sleeve, typical crazy white liberal. Interesting. Rich white weird people also do what this young lady is doing, trying to point people away from her as if she's not a part of that. But she is, and in the end, she will go home to her flock. She's fully nobody but herself. My thing is, say you were to come from old money, like truly old money in the terms of like, Regardless of what you do, you maybe have like a trust of like 20 million coming your way. What do you even do? Like, what do you do with your life? Because you know that for the most part, almost nothing you do could even like financially match up to the trust. <laughs> Meaning like all your efforts practically, financially speaking, worthless. Hmm. One hundred. You do have to be rich to own a Range Rover. The breakdowns and mechanical repairs happen more often than oil changes. <laughs> the thing is, there's a lot of people who buy Range Rovers that are not wealthy. They might make a good income, but they're not wealthy because they went to debt to buy the Range Rover. Cost too much. It drops in value. They're making payments on it. They could probably pay to afford the upkeep of it, but barely. Interesting. I thought that this was kind of like interesting because like it's such like a difference between like a whole bunch of different cultures, right? For example, one culture that I know, like for example, in the Korean community, South Korean community, even if you're not really making that much money, you are going to probably buy and upkeep a very nice car as like a status kind of thing. Because it's kind of looked down pretty heavily if you're not driving a really nice car because in the community, you're basically kind of like viewed like, oh, like, are you not doing well? Are you doing bad financially? Are you poor? Like, what is going on? It's like a very interesting thing. But cultures all have different aspects to them, especially when it comes down to like money, status, all that sort of stuff. Like, it's pretty crazy when you really think about it. <laughs>